and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think there's a few outstanding comments that I've not caught up with as yet, but I will obviously endeavour to do so as soon as possible. Um, also, as per usual, any comments I make during this week's episode of the show are wholly my own and bear no relevance to the company that I work for. Right, okay, so this week's episode of the show is, again, new stuff, uh, including a, a, a real brand new bottling that's only just come out, so that's that's really cool. Um, the story to this week's episode of the show started a couple of months ago when I had a, a phone call from um, from Morgan from the uh, Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery who said, uh, I work for a distillery in Yorkshire, and I said, mm, yep, I know. Um, and he said, um, uh, I, I, are you interested in tasting tasting our whiskey? And I said, well, I've already tasted it. Um, I know what it's like. <laughs> and um, he said, well, what do you think? And I said, well, well, I'm not going to tell you what I told him, otherwise it's going to give this week's episode of the show away, isn't it? But we, we had a, a, a conversation and um, he kindly offered to send me some samples to refresh my memory and my palate. And then said that uh, um, we're planning on releasing a, uh, a peated malt or repeated finished malt and uh, as soon as that's uh, been been launched I'll get you a sample and I'll get you a sample of new make as well and I thought well that, that's that's very generous as you well know I always enjoy tasting new make spirit and as I always say it is the DNA of a distillery and you get all the character uh, before any other character of you know oxidation or wood notes or anything like that is added to it and it gives you a real insight into the um, the, the, the spirit that's been distilled at a distillery and obviously for a, a lot of you guys you unfortunately never have the opportunity to taste that so it's uh, it's always a pleasure to to do so and um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to to the distillery and to Morgan for kindly sending the samples and um, so uh, for those who don't know um, the spirit of Yorkshire distillery is in Yorkshire funny that kind of the name gives it away and the range of, of uh, whiskey that is produced is called Filey Bay which is a bay near the distillery um, it's all so organic isn't it you know um, anyway so the distillery uh, began production in 2016 was one of uh, Dr Jim Swan's um, I wouldn't say creations, but it was involved in the, uh, the in the setting up of the distillery, like a number of other distilleries. And it seems to me that Dr. Swan had a, a little bit of a thing for column stills. I mean, as you may well remember, the the Penderyn Distillery in Wales, which I think was one of his earlier um, distilleries, or uh, that he uh, collaborated on uh, as a, a hybrid sort of pot column still, and. Um, the, not that the the the, uh, the Yorkshire Distillery has it, but it has, uh, interestingly enough, a three still setup. So it's got basically uh, a pot still as the wash still. It's got a pot still uh, as the, for the um, spirit still, but it's also got a four column uh, column still, four column column still, four, four plate column still, four column column still. Anyway, um, so it. Gives you sort of, you know, gives the distillery obviously a little bit more flexibility with what it can do with its spirit. And I would imagine that they're probably, well, you know, if you've got three stills, you're going to use them in tandem, aren't you? I'm pretty certain there is some triple distilled spirit that's that's maturing in their warehouses, although I, that hasn't been um, uh, confirmed or denied by the distillery, as we said. But essentially, so what the distillery does is uh, is, is uh, a standard sort of distillation, sort of a, a double distillation, with uh, some of the uh, spirit obviously having a second distillation in the pot still and some in the column still. Spirit is then basically blended together, and that is what is uh, then then put into cask. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be sort of quite interesting. I, I guess um, certainly from, um, well, no, I'm not going to say that because it's kind of giving it away. But anyway, um, let's just take a look at uh, today's lineup, shall we? How can I hide away the lost sight? 
Right, okay, so obviously we're going to kick off with the new make. Uh, I don't exactly know when this particular sample was distilled and bottled, I'm guessing fairly recently. Um, it's bottled, or the, the spirit is 63.5%, so water butt on hand. Um, and then we're going to sort of move straight into the uh, what they're calling the flagship bottling. Now, 100% uh, uh, first fill bourbon, approximately three and a half years old. Um, when I first tasted the, uh, uh, the the spirit, it was in their second release, which was quite an interesting uh, bottling, different to the flagship in that it was uh, a number of uh, American oak casts vatted with, I think it was one sherry butt, I think. Um, and they did two releases of that and have now decided that they're going to do a wholly American oak aged flagship bowling. So, good stuff. Um, they're also filling into a number of different casks as well. And uh, the set, third uh, sample we'll be looking at is one of those. This is the Moscatel finish. So, basically, uh, again, approximately three and a half years in uh, X200 litre bourbon casks. And three months there or thereabouts finishing in 250 litre Moscatel Hoggies. Uh, next sample we'll be looking at is the STR finish, so all of these bottled at 46%, no chill filtration, uh, no colouring, cool, so that's what we like to see. Uh, so again, about three and a half years in uh, 200 litre X bourbon casks and uh, about four months in um, shaved, toasted and recharred X Rioja casks. So always a bit uh, wary of STR finishes, you know, they can be uh, innately or can add an innate bitter tanning character, but I'm guessing sort of like, you know, such a small amount of time in the cask isn't going to um, hopefully give it that much bitterness. Um, and the brand new bottling that we're looking at, uh, that the penultimate one, is batch one of the peated finish. Now, you're thinking peated finish? What's all that about? Um, so basically, again, spirit aged for about three and a half years in 200 litre X bourbon, and then finished for between four and six months in X peated whiskey casks. Now, you're probably going, oh, well, why aren't they doing a proper peated malt? Well, um, I suppose there's several reasons why distilleries tend to sort of go down this finishing. Uh, a, it basically means that, you know, they haven't got to mess about with, with clean, cleaning out the entire system. I mean, you know, for many distilleries that produce an unpeated and a peated malt, they'll obviously leave the peated malt uh, production to the end of the, um, of the cycle uh, so they can then sort of shut down, clean everything out, unless of course you're McMyra when you do a distillation run of unpeated spirit through it and call it smoke tails, which I think is really cool. Um, but you know, so it kind of, but it also kind of gives you, I guess, uh, well, you could argue a little bit more control over the amount of peat in your spirit. I mean, yes, you can specify the peating level of your barley to X parts per million, and you can you know, roughly say by the time it's gone through the distillation process, you've probably lost about half of that peating level. But it's always still a bit of a guess. Um, and, well, and so basically by, by you know, finishing in an ex isla casks, uh, which a number of distilleries do and have done, uh, Pulteney is uh, one that springs to mind, um, may, maybe gives you a little bit more... Um, flexibility over how much peat character you want and I'm guessing that um, well I'm not going to tell you what the spirit's like so I'll tell you that when I get around to tasting it but they obviously don't want to produce a peat to behemoth uh, so we'll leave it at that and finally the last sample is um, well it's a it's a, a, a single bourbon um, single ball, single Oloroso cask sample. Now, uh, don't know the cask number. Don't think this is also. I've been told that this is not being planned to be released as a single cask bottling. Although um, the distillery, I believe, did release a single PX cask uh, at some stage. Um, so, but this was just basically sort of something Morgan said. Oh, I'll get you something special out of the warehouse, and I'm thinking, ooh, nice. Um, so it's about 62%, and uh, uh, like I said, it's a single. It's and it, it, the spirit spent its entire well three and a half, four years, I guess. Now I think this was uh, um, distilled in 2016. 
uh, so you know three and a half four years uh, wholly in uh, the Oloroso cask so it'll be interesting to see whether that's a peat monster or not peat monster an Oloroso sherry monster sorry um, and, oh, I've got peat on the brain anyway um, oh, I think, I, think I'm, I need to wet my palate so uh, I'm going to shut up now and uh, I'm going to going to taste some whiskey <laughs> So let's kick off with the new make. So 63.5%. Let's see what the nose gives us. Now that is really fruity. Um, quite estery, apricot, banana, crystallised citrus. Now, from, from smelling this, my initial thought is, ah, going for the sort of like the estery character off the bat. So we're talking long walk form in fermentation. Uh, to get the, develop those esters, but no. Apparently, the uh, it's only about 72 hours, which is relatively short in in sort of fermentation uh, times. So, where's this estery fruity sweetness coming from? Well, it can only really be coming from the column still. Higher rectified spirit, higher alcohols, higher esters, um, and that's absolutely gorgeous. That is a beautiful clean there's a little bit of malt biscuit um but it's got just such a lovely balance between the sort of the weight of the spirit and it's got the freshness and this is obviously where the blending of the spirit from the two stills comes in so you have the weight of the pot still and you've got the the fresher elements coming from the uh, the column still and um that's just gorgeous absolutely juicy bursting with fruit um and yeah, there's a little bit of an oiliness there, which you would expect with new make, but no faintiness, no off notes, no sort of, you know, it is just, it's just gorgeous. Um, so I'll pass on. That alcohol is so well contained. Yes, all right, the finish is a little bit short. Um, and mask but again a little bit oilier on the palate a little bit more of that sort of malt biscuity kind of character um but still plenty of that sort of bubble gummy white fruit apricot melon pear barley i mean it's got an almost sort of alsatian white fruit character it's juicy it's gorgeous um there's a little bit of lime a little bit of minerality um but that's that's lovely, and um, I'm going to put a little bit of drop of water with it and see uh, see what happens to it. Um, not too much. Um, right, getting more of the citrus character now. I'm getting more lime, lemon. It's a a lovely minerality, lovely freshness. Um, now. I believe that the barley is all sourced locally from, uh, uh, I think it's a family farm in, um, what's the name of the place, uh, uh, Hanmanbi, um, apologies if I've got the pronunciation wrong, but you know I'm hopeless at pronunciation of foreign words and places. <laughs> um, yeah, and basically the water is drawn from, I'm guessing, boreholes um, it, and from it within sort of quite chalky soil. So. Uh, I'm guessing the soil is picking, the, the water is picking up this sort of, I don't get a chalkiness, but I get quite a minerality. It's a sort of soft minerality. It's not a kind of um, space-side, slightly hard, or, or space-side sort of highland, slightly granity um, uh, character. It's got a sort of a soft minerality. That is, again, just absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what pass on it. A little less fruity, a little less floral, uh, a little bit more oiliness, a little bit more barley, um, a little bit more biscuitiness, uh, but still some lovely fruit there. Um, I mean, stick that into American oak and that's going to be gorgeous. Oh, giving the game away there. Right, okay, so let's see what uh, three and a half years in first fill American oak does to, uh, to the spirit. Let's see what the nose gives us. 
lovely, gorgeous. Um, plenty of that sort of estuary fruit. A um, bit more pineapple-y. Um, pear, apricot, apple, barley. Now, and the oak, although first fill is obvious, you, you get a lot of first fill, um, vanilla, straw, touch of uh, slight grippy tannin, um, but again, balanced absolutely amazingly, really nice, really juicy. Um, I mean, this is a sort of spirit that really ticks all my boxes. It's not hard, it's not industrial, it's not oh, traditional, you know, it is just absolutely gorgeous. It is juicy, it's fruity, it's it's the sort of thing that you want want to sort of, I just want to have more than one glass of. Um, yeah, okay, you, you might argue it's a little bit sweet and, and it does have that sort of slightly bubblegummy character, but to me, I love that. Let's see what the parts are. That is a lovely progression. It starts quite citric, quite fresh, a little bit, again, a little minerally. Um, estuary fruit kind of moves in, pineapple, apricot. A little bit of honey, American oak sort of moves in on the mid palate, creamy, a little bit of a grip from the tannin. Um, and then back to the sort of like the fruit, the barley, a um, little bit of wood spice on the, on the aftertaste. Um, that is absolutely gorgeous. It you know it just just shows that this, that they've created this lovely spirit character, which you know is just absolutely at home in American oak. Um, the American oak obviously adding the sort of vanillins that the may feel, um, but boy, that is a bloody good whiskey. I promise I'll be what you want me to be. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Moscatel finish. So, uh, only about three months in uh, the Moscatel cast, although it has picked up a reasonable amount of colour. Um, let's see what uh, the nose gives us. The, the Moscatel is quite noticeable. Um, it's got that kind of grapey, marmalade -y kind of character. Um, again, it also seems to have emphasised the American oak tannins. Um, but again, plenty of distillery character, plenty of estuary fruit, barley. Again, a little bit of citrus as well. Really nicely balanced and just goes to show how much influence a cask can give a spirit in such a relatively short period of time. I mean, I think if you'd have left this for another sort of three to six months it would have really sort of started to overtake uh, the um, other characteristics of the spirit and this is it you know it's all about sort of building layers of complexity but not swamping any particular layer um, so yes I'm getting the Moscatel grapiness I'm getting the distillery character I'm getting some American oak character and yeah, it's a little, it's a little less bubblegummy now, and more honeyed on the sweetness. Um, so probably, if you're not a great fan of the sort of bubblegummy kind of characteristics, then you know you're going to, but love sort of fruity whiskies, then you're going to love this because this is absolutely gorgeous. So pass on. Again, kicks off with the grapey Moscatel character, um, honey, lo lovely soft vanillins, and then in comes the uh, the distillery character again. Not overly estuary fruit, you know. It's still got that sort of pineapple, apricot, apple, um, but again, it's not so estuary. It's still sweet because it's got that honeyed kind of sweetness. And also the tannins just grip a little bit more on the finish. 
um, there's no bitterness, but they do grip, and it, it's again adding a nice uh, counterbalance to the sort of the honeyed sweetness of the um, of the Moscatel. Um, lovely finish, uh, and just a, just a gorgeous whiskey. Um, like I say, m not quite so um, so, so bubblegummy, but it has that sort of honeyed sweetness, and um, yeah, I, I just think the. The, the, the balance on that is just absolutely fantastic. Right, okay, so let's move on to the SDR cast. Well, I guess by now you're probably thinking, uh, or you probably realise exactly what I said to Morgan when he said, what did you think of our whiskey? And uh, my reaction was, well, I really like your whiskey. Um, and um, he said, Ain't got to do too much hard sell then, have I? And I said, uh, no. And, um, yeah, so anyway, let's move on to the SDR cast. So, again, uh, only about sort of four months in, in the, the SDR Rioja cask. So, I'm looking for the, hopefully the same uh, level of balance as we had in the Moscatel finish. And, again, wonderfully balanced. It kicks off with that juicy red-black fruit, um, dusty tannins, a little bit of charred oak earth spice and again the estuary fruit comes through um, again pineapple apricot apple touch of citrus touch of toffee I mean that's wonderfully soft no I'm not getting any bitterness from the the STR casks and um, it's probably down to the fact that it just hasn't spent um, too long in those particular casks but again just just gorgeously balanced and like I said or I have said in, on numerous occasions when you have such a gorgeous spirit the last thing you want to do is just sort of like you know stamp on it with you know too much oak you know you've got a lovely spirit let the spirit show um, and well the distillery is certainly doing that Let's see what the power sign am Again, kicks off with the um, the red black fruits, a little bit of spice, a little bit of tannin, um, and then th in comes the distillery character again, sort of pineapple, apricot, apple, uh, a little bit of toffee, um, some citrus, a lovely minerality again on the finish, a little drying on the finish. The tannins do dry it just a smidge, but that does allow that sort of minerality. Um, the barley is kind of coming back. The citrus as well on on the uh, the aftertaste. Um, I mean, again, just absolutely gorgeously balanced. This is, uh, you know, absolutely in my personal opinion, a textbook way of finishing a spirit. You know, delicately done. Add some le levels, add some layer, but just don't swamp the character of the spirit. And that is just absolutely gorgeous. Right, okay, so let's move on. To the uh, the peated finish, so uh, four to six months in ex Isla casks. Let's see what those gives us on this end, shall we? Well, we're kind of again back to the flagship, um, juicy estuary, um, pineapple, and just a, a little bit of astringent peat. Um, really subtle, really herbal. Got that. Got a sort of almost kind of um, almost saltiness but I think that's more the sort of the minerality the spirit mingling with with the sort of uh, the, the herbalness of the peat um, just just gently smoked I mean again and I think sort of you know that you can just say that so far um, the watchword for the distillery is just balance uh, absolutely gorgeously balanced just a little bit of, of peat it's you know it's gonna there are not obviously a number of you guys that, that sort of love peat and don't love peat you know but this i can't i can see this you know appealing to sort of to people that are maybe not that keen on peat because it's just just adding a whiff a little bit of smoke a little bit of earth hmm 
slightly heathery now with, with a little bit of time. Um, yeah, Let's see what the parts are. Kicks off with a little bit more herbal peat on the palate to start off with, but the distillery character comes through quite, quite, uh, quite smartly. Um, full, juicy. Peat is kind of taking an edge slightly off the esteriness of the spirit, but it's still got that lovely sort of sweet white fruit. Um, touch of creamy oak. Finish is really nice. The peat kind of comes back on the. Um, on the finish with a sort of a little bit of an astringency again slightly minerally on on the finish and um yeah i mean absolutely gorgeous um lovely just just a sort of a lovely all-round whiskey that's all i'd say right okay and so finally we've got the full term oloroso cask let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we Now, yes, I can pick up a little bit of distillery character because I know what I'm looking for. I'm kind of almost searching for it. And so maybe my brain is saying it is actually there. But it's, it's, it's sherry. It's very clean. It's grapey. It's dates. It's walnuts. It's cinnamon. Quite toasty as well. The oak has got a real toastiness to it. Um, cinnamon. Dried grape. Again, but this just doesn't have the balance of the other bottlings. Uh, I mean, this is pretty swamped, it has to be said, by the sherry. Um, and again, I mean, you know, if this was me and if I was going to release this, I'd obviously sort of vat this in with some um, American oak age stuff because it's just, it's a bit one-dimensional, it has to be said. Um, but then again, you know, if you sherry heads, um, you know, this is the sort of thing you, you guys love, you know. Anyway, let's see what parts are. Intense, the combination of the alcohol and the tannins is really drying. Um, Sweet raisinated fruits, touch of prune, walnut, um, plenty of spice. Short again, the combination of the tannins and the alcohol is really shortened that. Um, and again, it's kind of one dimensional. It's all about the um, all about the uh, the sherry. Uh, let's see if a, a little water does um, a little bit of magic to this, and see if it does eke out a bit more distillery character. No, not really. Um, I'm getting a little bit more kind of, uh, sort of not quite marmalade but sort of sort of orange conserve maybe. Um, but it's all still pretty much sherry. Um, so it passes like that. Again, the palate is pretty much all sherry. Um, still toasty, uh, dried fruit. Longer, you know, uh, and but to me, not as interesting as all the other bottlings. Um, so, yeah. I believe, I leave, don't leave the door. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big thank you to Morgan and to the distillery for kindly sending me the samples for today's episode of the show, and I love them. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, I think that this is just a wonderful distillery. It's producing wonderful whiskey. Um, and, you know, price point, what, 50s, um, you know, is, is in and around the same sort of uh, price point as, you know, the other English distilleries, um, you know, like Cotswolds and um, St George's Distillery. Um, so, you know, I think sort of the price is good and uh, the price is right, as they say. Um, anyway, so the new make, well, it kind of sets out its its stall. Uh, it is a, a soft, it's a juicy, it's an estuary uh, barleyed spirit and it is just, you know, 
you can make yourself is actually <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Stick it in American oak for, th for three and a half years, and well, you know that is just just sublime, absolutely gorgeous. Um, not swamped, r really harmonious, really balanced. Uh, the oak is sort of adding the vanillins, the sort of a little bit of toffee to that sort of sweet uh, estuary fruit character of the uh, of the distillery. Moscatel again. Beautiful balance, less bubble gummy, a uh, little bit more honeyed. I can see a, you know, a lot of people, a lot of whiskey drinkers, really enjoying this kind of uh, whiskey. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I know for a fact that uh, a number of you guys have uh, have purchased bottles of this and uh, uh, and and uh, you know have, have very much enjoyed it. So um, anyway, on to the STR again. STR beautifully balanced, not too much of the cask, no real bitterness from the uh, from from the recharring, uh, and again, like I said, just just balanced, um, and the same with the peated finish. Uh, okay, yeah, you, right. Some some of you purists may well say, well, you know, make a peated malt properly. Um, to me, it doesn't bother me. It's all about the juice in the bottle, and the juice is bloody good, you know. So it doesn't matter how you make that peated malt. It's it's just just spot on uh, just a little bit of peat a whiff you know nothing too um, too heavy uh, and just just really gorgeously drinkable the oloroso cask well you know <laughs> you know me and and, and sherry casks um, you know for me to sort of rave about them they've got to be something pretty special and and, and that was just just all sherry but it just goes to show um, the the spirit can get swamped quite easily in sherry casks and, and this style of spirit being sort of estuary and relatively light is pretty prone to sort of that kind of thing uh, and so obviously the um, less uh, invasive casks are probably the, the way to go or finishing. Certainly I think, you know, if they finished it in ex Oloroso casks for about, you know, three to sort of six months, then I think, again, it would fall into the sort of the balance ca category of uh, of the other bottlings. And um, that's what, obviously, if it was up to me, that's what I would be doing. Um, so, yeah, and um, hopefully, like I said, in due course, you know, the, the, the distillery has been playing around with um, uh, a triple distillation because I think that would be really intriguing. That would be really interesting to see and certainly uh, uh, would work really nicely in American Oak. But anyway, so um, the, the, the range as, as it stands is, is pretty widely available, certainly in the UK. I don't know about... Uh, in international markets, but certainly I think if uh, if it's uh, in your local liquor store or uh, whiskey store or whatever, um, I really su su suggest you get hold of a bottle because it's just bloody good. Um, yeah, so that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Hopefully, I shall um, carry on the theme of new stuff next week. Um, I've kind of an idea of what I'm going to be doing. Um, but obviously until we get there, I don't really know for definite. But anyway, next week's episode of the show will be fun anyway, whatever it is. So until then, all that's left to say is grab yourself a bottle of Filey Bay, good ramming, and good afternoon. <laughs>